And we return! What an exciting time it is, John! It is exciting indeed, Matt. So, with us here, as mentioned twice before, we have Martin Anward, also known as Wiss, on the forums. And we're going to talk the Art of War, which is the upcoming expansion for Europa New Solis 4. Yes. Is that the term we're using? Because it is pretty expansive yeah, when it comes a, to new stuff. It is a very, very big expansion. Uh, I, I checked out the dev diaries, and let's just say that there's a lot of text, a lot of images, and yeah. I mean, um, we, we're going to have to take a while to get through all this, but there's a lot of changes yes. and improvements. And, you know, there's a few dev diaries to come as well. Ooh, nice. So how many more are we going to expect? It's just... Oh, many. Many? Ooh, ooh. All right, so it is the Art of War, but there's a lot more than war going on. But we can start with that. Art of War brings some changes to how you actually do war in the game. Am I correct? Uh, yes. Mainly the changes to Art of War is that it makes war a lot more probably something in France. Uh, I suppose we should start. Are we going in? We are going in. Makes war a lot more... Convenient. Convenient. Because, you know... War can be kind of a hassle, like, you have to send a bunch of people to die, and then they get, like, blood all over your carpet. I mean, you some people are there just lying down. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> some, some of them just lie down on the job. It's not okay. But, and especially when, you know, you have a bunch of vassals, and for some reason they insist on not dying for you. Hmm, that's very inconvenient. Though. Yeah, I gotta say. So, one of the things we are introducing in Art of War is a little thing called Allied oops, Objectives, which I will show here. What is this? And the pink part is, you know, beautiful code art. Placeholders? <laughs> yes, placeholders. That will look nicer. But uh, what this allows you to do is that it allows you to control the behavior of your subjects while you're Ooh. at war. So, if I'm France here, this means I have all these vassals, and they're fighting with me together against England. Uh, England. Yeah, England. Those guys are just... Uh. But I don't directly control their armies, because, you know, they are their own, they are, they are AIs, they have their own ideas of what to do. And by default, this is how it is. It says that, like, a Vern will decide on their own strategies. But maybe we don't want them to decide on their own strategies. Maybe we want well, to decide They're not the mastermind you are. Yeah, exactly. In which case, I can set, uh, if this mouse help response, I can set them to a uh, so-called focus. And you can either set all of them to the same focus or change individually. Yeah, because they're just different. And just before now, we had Precisely. them all on different focuses. They all on no focus. But now you can see I change only for a verb. And the focuses we add are aggressive and supportive. All right. Which lets you basically tell them to either go siege and go fight their armies or stay close to me, support me. All right. Because, you know, people have said that, like, uh, some people don't want their vassals to, like, harbor siege the enemy, some people just want their vassals to hang back and help them, and this actually gives you control over it. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want other people trying to execute your plan. Yeah, uh, and if for some reason you still want them to make up their own minds, you can do that, you know, if you're a nice person. So it basically just adds more options and variety to, to your combat yes. arsenal. There is also a second part of this, which is that you can tell your allies and subjects in war to focus on certain places. For example, let's see, uh, we have Normandy here, and I want Provence to focus on Normandy. So I can tell them, hey Provence, you should go take that province. And they will both be like, oh, they'll go siege it. It's not like they'll do it regardless of how completely idiotic it is, like if you tell them to go siege a province in the middle of Siberia... They're not gonna do no, it. No, they're not gonna do it. But, but can you combine, like say, so can you tell a province to be extra aggressive against Normandy, but then put them on supportive so they would be extra supportive if Normandy attacks, or how do these interconnect? Uh, in this case, the this is sort of, sort of like engage this province. All right. This is mostly for the aggressive focus. Okay, okay. This is not just for your subjects either, you can tell your allies to do it. Your subjects will be more likely to obey your objectives, even if they're stupid, your allies will treat them as guidelines. All right, but you you can actually do more with your allies. You can you can let over control of the units or provinces or what? I read something about uh, that. Uh, you can sell. Let's see, we have some new naval stuff. 
which one did you mean specifically? Oh, yeah, transfer occupation. Yes, yes that's that correct. is what I meant. I, I just missed the entire technical phrase for it. Yes, because, you know, uh, one of the things that can happen is that you end up with sort of the wrong person occupying a province in war, and, you know, we've all experienced that. Like, your ally occupies a province, and you want that province, but you can no longer take that province because your ally is occupying it. So, what you can do is that you can transfer occupation. Let's go ahead and let that occupy. Uh, and transfer occupation simply means that any province you control, you can just pick, all right, so I'm France, and I want this province to... Ooh, that was secrets. <laughs> and I want this province to go to Provence. And then you can just transfer the occupation to Provence, and they will have occup control of the province. The AI will also make use of this, by the way. All right. If you're the war leader in a war, and they're occupying provinces, they're not themselves interested, and they will just transfer it to you. Because that you, makes more sense. Yeah, and then you can decide what to do with it. So, so once again, an option to just make things a lot more deeper. Yeah, it's it a lot more convenient, more quite simply. And that that's kind of seems to be the overarching theme of the Art of War, just continuously deepening the game. Yes, uh, we're just trying to make the game more fun to play, more, more deep, more interesting, more convenient. It's, you know... Better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that, that's kind of the, the gist of all our post release support and DLC and expansions and all that, just trying to expand on the current experience mm. and just making it a lot better. Because, of course, as I know, if you guys at PDS had your way, you would just develop a game for 25 years until it was perfect <laughs> and then release it. But that doesn't work, does it? No, no, that doesn't really work. But, you know, you can, we can, we can develop. We, you know, we, we want to iterate. I mean, we love our games. We really do. I mean, I love playing our games. And most of us at the office are the same one. We just really like our games. So when you're playing the game and you're like playing at home, and you're like, oh, I want to prove this. This is annoying. And you put it somewhere in the list. And eventually it tends to, you know, get into the game. And that's what happens when you have people who are as passionate about the games as we are. Yeah. That it's not just, you know, it's not just a business for us. It's also about the game. It's not just about the games what to make, it's also about the games what to play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I see a lot of the PS people just constantly playing their own games. It's, I mean, it must be a pretty fun job in that oh, yeah. sense. It is a very fun <laughs> job. It is the kind of job where on a Sunday I can go, awesome, it's Monday tomorrow. I know. It, it's, <laughs> it's some of you, you should see how crazy early some of the PDS people are here and just, you know, they are here earlier and they leave later. Uh, and you just tend to keep on working all the time. I actually think some of you do come in on the weekends too. I've heard of that. Yeah, I, it happens. It happens. It's, it's like, cool. I just have to work some more. <laughs> Add this feature. Uh, but talking about features, we actually have even more things. And you mentioned the fleets, and there's uh, yes. something called mothballing. That's... Or maybe that's the layman's term for it. Yes. And this is a very oh. beautiful graphic. It's, it's a... It's a ship with a white thing over it. It's a mothball. I, I'm not sure what, in which universe is a mothball, but I, I have been told by my best programmers that this is indeed a mothball. Was it also them that made the yes. mothball graphics? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mothball. So mothballing is a way to basically not have to pay maintenance for your entire fleet. Because, you know, if you're maintaining a war fleet and you want your trade fleet to be sailing around making you money, but all your heavy ships are just sitting in port costing you everything. Yeah. Then, and you don't think you're going to need them anytime soon. Because then it's peace times. So. Yeah, it's peace time. You know, everyone's at peace. And of course, there will never be wars again. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> at least not for a bit. At least for a little while. while. Uh, then you can mothball them. What this means is that the fleet will not will only cost half the regular cost as though your maintenance slider was a zero for that particular fleet however the fleet will be locked in port you can only do it while it's in your own port meaning it can't move it can't like split it can't merge it's just sitting there and as you can see it's continually taking damage <sighs> but it won't be destroyed it will go down all the way to 25 percent health if it's multiple long enough which means that if you do take it out of mothballing... You yeah, then your ships are not going to be ready for prime time. You're going to need a bunch of months to repair to be ready. Yeah. So if your entire war fleet is mothballed and you get surprise attacked by someone who you need to fight at sea, well, sucks to be you. Hopefully you have strong allies. Yeah, 
Let's hope. So that's not bowling. Uh, so it, it's basically, once again, a more convenient feature yes. to be able to... Adam, as you'd say, I mean, it, it would be really sucky to have a huge war fleet and then be like, oh, this hampers me, now I can't do anything. But of course you don't want to get rid of that fleet either because you might need it someday. So yes. it's a, once again a convenient feature and I, I, like, I like that. I mean, uh, for a, pro a novice player like me, I just like being able to do even more things. I don't know if... It, I, it feels like you're running out of space on all these menus sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> where where do we add this new button now again? Yeah, that, that can be a problem. Or, but, you know, we usually find a way. Definitely. And just to be briefly reconnect, here is the transfer control. Of this. Oh, so there. I have now transferred control of that province, the Provence. Oh, you're welcome, Provence. Yes. Like, can you take it back? No. No. They can choose to give it back, but AI won't transfer provinces back to you after you give it to them because they assume, okay, this they want me now. to have this. Yeah. All right, yeah, but but if Provence yeah. occupied that themselves, they wouldn't actually want it, so they'd give it to you. Yeah. That makes sense. I like that. So you can actually be in like a, a transfer war, trying to transfer province back and forth. Yes. Yeah. No, no, precisely. That does, well, that doesn't really. You can if it's players. Doesn't really theoretically. <laughs> yeah, theoretically. <laughs> All right, like, so no, you take <laughs> That's so, terrible. Problems. So we have even more updated features. What more does Art of War bring um, that, that we haven't spoken about? Uh, well, feature-wise now, because I know we're going to go into the yeah, actual yeah, expanded there, oh maps, my, which there, is just there is so the maps. much. But there's some more fleet stuff. Uh, I think we talked about upgrading ships, correct? No, we did not talk about upgrading ships. As in, yes. So... And yes, we should talk about it. Yeah, that's not something I can show right now, but because, you know, this is the start of the game. But this little button here, this little button will let you upgrade. When you get new ships, you previously had to, if you want to like change your frigates for heavy frigates, you had to rebuild every single ship. You had to disband all of those old ships, you had to build new ships. Yeah. You don't have to do it anymore. You just have to click a button. Oh! <gasps> Yes. Convenience! Yes, convenience! It's the word of order war. So you just oh, click a button and pay the cost. It is cost is basically the same as it would be uh, if you actually have to buy all the new ships. And the ships will be upgraded and set at 0% health. So they have to be repaired afterwards. So it's basically the, the same functionality as before, but bound to a lot yeah. more convenient button. Yeah, one uh, click instead of like 50 clicks. Because as far as I understand, I mean, there there's, sure, your problem is always is all about just managing and managing and managing, but there are some parts of micromanagement that are, you can make a lot more easy to handle without actually making the gameplay more casual or less steep or whatever you want to think. Because as far as I understand, you can still do the old way, but that's just having more things to click on before you get the same results. Absolutely. Um, which is, once again, a very nice thing to have. Yeah, it's like we said at the start, you know, it's all about making stuff more convenient. But there is also something that has been made a bit more, not complicated, but deep, with how you uh, measure, like, unrest in provinces, right? Yes! Because that, that was originally just one system that's basically been split into two separate uh, entities. Not or, or precisely. What we've done is that we have reworked the revolt risk system okay. into a new system called unrest. And we have added province autonomy. And yeah, this is very much, again, temporary. This is beer. Yes. Uh, previously what you'd have is that in each province you would have a revolt risk, like say 5%. And that would be the chance every month that, you know, you would get a rebel uprising. So it was very kind of random. You know, sometimes you got no rebels at all, sometimes you got all the rebels. I know, that happened to me my first playthrough. And sometimes you would have, you would be marching to kill a rebel stack, and one day before you arrived, another rebel stack would appear, and then yep. your army would, would get wiped. Which isn't very realistic in some senses. No. So what we have now instead is a system called Unrest. And Rust is sort of... It's very much like the revolt risk ported, and you have an arrest in each province. But instead of each province having its chance to have rebel stack race, you have these rebel factions. Ooh. And the rebel factions have a progress towards an uprising. So they depend depending on which provinces they that are aligned to them. So each province is aligned to a type of rebel 
like peasants or naturalists. Okay. So as France, my French provinces up here are going to be peasant rebels. I, I, I just have to pause you and have to say it's amazing that there's a handle them button. Yes. <laughs> I, I really hope that's there to stay. It's, oh yeah, that's it's a great way to phrase it. Yeah, it's a, very, it's a nice button. It's like, ooh, rebels, what do I do? Handle, handle them. them. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the upper France would have peasant uprising. Yes, and the peasants, they want lower taxes and more autonomy. Basically, they don't want you to, you know, tax them. So then you have a plethora of options to just reach in here and be like, okay, I don't want a rebel uprising here, and then I do this policy change or go through an event or whatever, and the, then... Yeah, the way it works is that if I have unrest in these provinces, which I don't at the moment, yeah. then they will progress towards an uprising. It's sort of random, so you don't know exactly when it's going to happen, you just know that it's going to happen at some point. Because as far as I know, it's still the same thing with every X amount of time, it checks for the, the uprising chance. Uh, or, not or how exactly. Does that work? The way it works is that depending on the total unrest in their provinces, every month there is a chance that they will increase their progress towards an uprising. Oh. And when that progress hits 100%, you get a large uprising in multiple provinces. Ooh. So you get, instead of getting a lot of little uprisings, you get a single large one. And the way you can handle it is, of course, you can lower the unrest. I mean, if you can get rid of all of, all of the unrest, the faction will go away. Yeah. And just the reducing the unrest will reduce their progress towards an uprising. You can also do harsh treatment, which is something we had before. Mm. But before, it was in the provinces, so you would like lower the revolt risk. In. Now you can harsh treat an entire faction, and that, in exchange for mill points, you move its progress backwards. Ah. So you can actually, if you have enough mill points, you can keep an uprising off indefinitely, but if it's a large uprising, it's going to get very expensive. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. Um, so, that, once again, just adding, I mean, it, it's just insane, like all of these things that just continue to, I don't know, just make the game a lot more. Uh, intuitive to play yes. it. As far as I understood too, I mean you said that factions are aligned to, uh, to surrounding provinces so um, if there is a uprising in a neighboring province that doesn't belong to you, can that in any way gain you or like improve your situation well, in life? Well, if they might want to join your country. It's entirely possible that rebels, you know, are on your side. Right. So absolutely. So or, they, weaken, or weaken your neighbor. So they are treated as like strategical entities that can be argued with. Oh, you can't with. really do diplomacy with them. Oh. Um, uh, you can support them. You can support rebel factions in other countries by like okay. giving them money, which will make them friendly towards you. Sneaky. So yeah, we do have some stuff like that, but they're not like a country that you can do di direct diplomacy with. Okay, I know this is ultra specific now, but if uh, it's saying that there's an uprising in an enemy province and they want to join you, if they then won this uprising, would that mean that you actually get that province? Yes. <gasps> if they if they occupy it long enough, it will defect to you. Or if they break the enemy country, in which case all the provinces that want to join you will defect to you. Because, I mean, now you have, like, rebel factions controlling regions. Say that you have Ukrainian nationalists yeah. in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. <laughs> Topical, yes, yeah, very. <laughs> then those nationalists will likely be aligned with the entire Ukraine area, which yeah. means that if they win, all of Ukraine becomes independent. Oh. And we also have changed the accept demands, which is sort of a cheesy way that people used to handle rebels. That is that you could either wait for them to win mm -hmm. and get a really bad half thing, or you could click accept demands and get a not so bad thing. Mm -hmm. And why would you ever not click accept demands? Yeah, that makes sense. So now you can click uh, now you can click accept demands anytime you want to, but it will be the exact same result as the rebels winning. So basically, it's just end this war now, or yeah, it's like oh, I'm I'm gonna lose this. I might as well give up because they will keep sieging my provinces and ruin my economy if I don't. Yeah. So like we can see these peasants, they want less taxes and more local autonomy. So if I just accept that, it means that all the provinces aligned with them will get less taxes and more local autonomy. And then if the local autonomy reaches 100%, I suppose 100, then it actually becomes an aut autonomous province. No, or how does that's that a different kind of rebel. There are also oh. nationalist and like uh, patriot rebels that can defect provinces. Local autonomy is actually a new system, which in other war, which uh, represents sort of how much control you have over a province, because you know the nations of the time weren't all that centralized. Yeah. So just look at Rome. I mean, that's I mean, earlier, but yeah. <laughs> so if we look at like Paris, then that province obviously has zero percent autonomy. I mean, complete control of Paris. But let's look at Perigord in the south. That has 12% autonomy, 
on account of being a different culture. And what that effectively does is that you get 12% less stuff from the province. You get 12% okay. less uh, income, you get 12% less uh, trade power, you get 12% less manpower, force limits, everything. So a province that's 50% autonomous is really just half a province for you. But that means that even if it reaches 100%, it would just be a province that you still yeah. own, you just don't get it. Yeah, precisely. It would be sort of like a province where you have, where you sort of nominally accept your rule, but you don't get anything from owning it. But then I can also, I mean, I can imagine it makes sense if a province is negative for you, for you to kind of make it just this autonomous area that still belongs to you, but doesn't cost anything. Yeah, because you can actually control autonomy by these little temporary buttons here, which is that you can either increase or decrease it every 30 years. What that does is that if you increase it, it will lower the unrest in the province for Which 30 years. Yes. If you decrease it, it will increase the unrest in the province for 30 years. So you can go in and say like, okay, I have all these rebels in Ukraine, let's give them some autonomy. Or, no, I don't like these people in Perigord, I want them to pay all the taxes to me. So now I did, but now they're not happy. So they might revolt. And that would be a horrible thing, but then you can accept their terms and everything will be back to normal. Or, you know, or kill them. Yeah. Kill them. <laughs> cold. <laughs> cold blooded. Uh, I grew up in Rosales and Crusader Kings tends to bring out the worst in people. Yes. 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 <laughs> or, or, <laughs> yeah, depending, depending on, on your viewpoint. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so I mean, uh, we are in Europe now, and I mean, being called Europe and Rosales is obviously a very Eurocentric game, but the Art of War brings a lot oh, of interesting yeah. stuff to North Africa or Africa in its entirety and Asia. Yes, you say it brings a lot of stuff everywhere. Yeah, so as, as far as I grasped, it may, basically makes these two continents a gazillion times more interesting to play. I, I saw some comments in the forums and someone was like, oh, I might actually want to start in North Africa now and play oh, yeah. through that because there's things happening there. It's historically more correct. Yes, it's, and you know, there's more provinces, there's more tax, meaning more people to play, there's more to do, there's just, I mean, if you look at, for instance, what we did in India, India has twice as many provinces, roughly, and significantly more countries, so it's not just more historically correct, it's also just a more fun area to play in, because there's so many more nations doing so much more, it takes longer to conquer, but if you unite all of India, you are powerful. And I just have to ask then, I mean, this might be a lamest question because I'm not too deeply invested in the PDS titles, but say you're in India and you're playing in India, do people, like, culturally act differently? I mean, because, as once again, it's a Eurocentric game, but, like, if you try diplomacy in India, have you looked at how the social structures actually worked back then and, and then kind of employed that into to this expansion, or, or how does that work? Not really, I mean... What we're doing is more like the flavor, for instance, adding the... Which, when we added like the personal deities to Hinduism, we tried to do it more from that perspective. Okay. Because, you know, we have... You can't really have... So that the game is completely, radically different, depending on which tag you play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's impossible and to do. Yeah, it's just that you'd have to make five games in one, and can't really do that. But, I mean, what we always try to do is that we try to give people the sense that they're playing in the region by adding flavor, by making it look correct, by making different areas play somewhat differently, by making sure there's difference between the religion and... And there's events and stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and all events. sorts of flavor events, decisions, uh, that sort of thing. So we try to like invoke, even if it plays similar to Europe, we try to invoke the feeling of the place. But then honestly, in some sense, it doesn't play similar too, because if there are unique events to say oh, India, yeah. then of course, I mean, that is, that is kind of what I was looking for. That's the cultural and society that, that, you know, just the place into it. I mean, I don't know what it could be, but it could be just some event that's... Okay, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do a good metaphor, but you know what I'm talking about. I can about. give you an example. Uh, I talked about Hinduism and personal deities. Yep. When you when your ruler get a new ruler as Hindu, you get to choose from a personal deity which gives you some bonuses. And there's various events related to those deities. And one of the things you can do is that you can withdraw in contemplation. Like if your ruler becomes learned and you start to contemplate his deity, like uh, for instance Kali, you know, starts to contemplate all that uh, destruction. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Shiva. You start okay. to contemplate all that you know destruction and creation. But it brings life. Yes, and. If you choose to withdraw in contemplation, your ruler's abilities will be diminished for a while, but afterwards you will get some unique 
uh, like bonuses and perks depending on which deity you choose. So your ruler will become like this learned uh, adherent of Shiva that understands all the mysteries of creation and destruction. And would that give you a bit more like quote unquote religious power as in like now I can conquer different provinces because I am the follower of Shiva. Yeah. And obviously people want to follow someone with a strong spiritual just guidance and inheritance. Yeah, for instance. Ooh. Fun. And and uh, I suppose it's the same thing that in Africa, just in, once again adding a lot more flavor and 17 new tags? 17 new tags. That's a lot of That's stuff. That's a lot of tags. You play so many things. Oops. Shall we accept the decline? What, 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 what <laughs> <laughs> short term boost in revenue. Yes, short term boost in revenue. That's all I let's accept, definitely. Let's. Everything that re reads short term is positive. I mean, never yes. think long term. Just do it. Just false you in. Yeah, we'll mean it. we need to meet our quarterly goals. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a game of time, it's a game of now. True. I mean, uh, you only have what, 400 years? Once That's again, this is why I've twice failed the tutorial. <laughs> I am this good at these games, but I, I think they're so much fun, but it's it's it, it's above my head. Um, yeah. But it, I mean, once again, I watched the multiplayer streams with Matt, and that's just so much fun to watch because there's so much going on. It's just shifts of controls. I, actually, something that I wanted to know, now now that I have more provinces and more tags in India, I mean, if you still play in Europe, and or of course, if you still play in Europe, this means that these provinces have a bit more not randomness to them but they can be bigger players or more interesting yeah. players later in the game too right because it's definitely a lot more interesting they can evolve into in the so rest many of the world now. because i mean there's more room yeah like the europeans can expand into the area that they expanded but there's uh, i mean if you manage to unite all of india you will be able to provide a very effective resistance or you can you know go into the areas that aren't that desirable like build a strong west african empire you know, go into China. Which could, I mean, the strong West African Empire could theoretically be very strong too, yeah. because I mean, Africa is hugely underrated in the fact that it's actually been just a central power for such a long time, but it's just, it got really ignored and declined during this period due to, I don't know, us being very, once again, mm. Eurocentric. Um, but so theoretically, I mean, I read that too, that in, in India, apparently in the 1400s, there were some Muslim factions that were the Turian. And so theoretically, you could just go in and play the Muslims and unite the Arab worlds in India yeah. and create this just world empire. Yeah, India is kind of split between Muslims and Hindus. And you, of course, have the Sikhs showing up later as well. Oh. So just adding a lot more flavor to the game, which I like because, of course, a lot of people that play EU play thousands and thousands of hours of so any kind of new variation, especially this level. I suppose it just adds a lot more fun to the experience. Mm. Definitely. Even though you're playing this tiny country in the middle of India, but that's a challenge too. I, I hear that people do like the challenges <laughs> in these games. It's it's so ridiculous. What's that? You have some achievement that's just so so hard to play. It has something to do with Japan and conquering. Uh, are you talking about uh, the three mountains? Yes. When you have to play as Ryukyu. It's something like that. Yeah, yeah you have to play as Ryukyu, which is a animist kingdom on Okinawa. <laughs> which is like the southernmost island yeah. that belonged to Japan, and you have to conquer the entire world. Has anyone gotten that? Yes. Really? People have gotten it. DDR, Jake. Did he get it the second time? Third time. Third time, that's right. God damn. Did we send him like a medal or something? It wasn't the it wasn't the PDX fan gather, he got one there. Oh, yeah. That's good. Uh, well deserved. That's yeah. just insane. Yeah, no, that guy is pretty good at the game. Yeah. Are, are, are we adding in the new achievements with the Art of War? Oh, yeah. We're nice. Do you have oh. any sneak peeks? <sighs> no. No, okay. Actually, I'm sure we will cover them in the Dev Diaries. <laughs> yeah, talking sneak peeks, we have talked a lot about the, the Dev Diaries that are actually out there. Is there anything interesting new that you can tell us for, for the EU fans here in the stream? Anything unannounced, fresh, or, or am I treading dangerous ground here? Well, since it's been popping up a bunch of times, and I'm sure people have paid attention to and the, they're gonna post the Cardinals anyways. that are appearing, oh. you can assume that maybe something is happening with, happening with the papacy. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's a tease. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, another tease. Do we do we know which the next Dev Diary that's going to come out is? What what to expect there? Mm. Or is that secret too? That is still that secret. Is secret. But it's, it's soon, you know. Soon. <laughs> all right. Well, it's coming out. It's coming out on Friday. So. That's tomorrow. Yes. I know the weekdays. Yes. So, you know, you don't have to wait a very long time. 
<laughs> Alright, great. <laughs> have I missed anything? Do you feel like there's anything you want to say that I've just skipped over? Or have we kind of gone through the, the aspects of the game that are talk about? So I, I can too. just add that Order War is going to be pretty damn good. It, it looks to be, I mean, the Order War name is kind of the seems to be a lot more than the Art of War, or is that going to change? Actually, yeah, well, now, now that I'm saying something The thing about like... that is that if you actually read the Art of War, uh, then that book is a lot about like peace and how to build a country that can effectively win wars. It's like, you know, wars are won before they are started and all that, and the importance of preparation and having the people behind you and all that. So, yeah, yeah you know, it could be deceptive, but... There's meaning to it. Ooh. Interesting. All right. So Matt actually left us for a second here, but thank you for joining me today, Martin. Um, we, I might not actually be done because there might be some questions from the chat and Matt is gone right now. Um, so, so let's banter about something else. How do you feel today? Yeah, pretty good. You do? We do have the play going around the office, but... Yeah, it, there's, I mean, we, this is insane. So at Paradox, I mean, this is better, just Paradox information. We have ridiculous low amount of meeting rooms. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, with with how how hard it is to find a place to meet. But this yeah. morning we were just walking around and everything was empty. You could yes. just go sit down <laughs> because anywhere. everyone is sick. Yes, <laughs> and I don't know what's going around, but I'm really happy that I haven't caught it because. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm not constantly fun days. just moving a bit away from you because you're still carrying the plague. Yes. <laughs> you're just, oh, you're no. just, you're just, ten, you're Matt, just tempting the gods now. What have you done? <laughs> what have I done? The no. problem is, is we had we had a meeting with all the newbies in the company, and we all pushed them into a single room. Oh, no, really? And it's and, well. And, and someone was coughing in there. Yes, and now too. half of them are sick. So yeah, for poor new people, well, you do get sick when you move to Stockholm. There's something that's commonly known as the Stockholm illness, but that's due to the subway, dirty, dirty subway. Dirty, dirty subway. <laughs> Clearly, you have not been on any of the subways all over the world. The, the, oh, no, that's an airplane. Yeah, Stockholm into... subway is is okay, clean. It's clean, but it's germy. There's, Tons of germs and just things to hold in. I, I don't like it. <laughs> Regardless, The Art of War, Sun Tzu's greatest book that was written over, what, 2,000 years ago now? Mm -hmm. Something Quite along some those lines. Is it copyrighted? It, well, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure if it's published by Disney, it still is. <laughs> um, regardless, um, do we have any sort of timetable on when this is done, or is this still open for suggestion? Uh it's still up. I mean, when it's done. Yeah, it's done when it's done. Okay, that's All right, cool. it's actually, Matt, you, since you are there near the computer, do we have any questions from the chat? Uh, nothing regarding... Uh, people want to see... are asking about Zoroastrianism, but they'll need to export their CK2 games. That's literally it. Uh, all the other stuff is all about uh, how dirty Stockholm is for the pristineness of New York City, which is <laughs> complete and utter... It's just completely useless. All Seriously, right, awesome. guys. So you guys out there... What's wrong with you? Seriously, it's the internet, Matt. It's the, just everything. It's like it's like that one hacker guy called 4chan. Like, yeah, I heard of him. He is pretty, really pretty mean guy. He's, very active. He's How can he be hardcore. everywhere at the same time? I know. Crazy. I'm, I'm not sure what the hell's going on there. Regardless, Wiz, thank you so much for thank you so much for joining us here today. We've been running over significantly more than uh, we were planning on to do actually today. But that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm really fond of this chair compared to my office chair. So I mean, people are people are constantly mind. saying this chair, like the plague magic and two in the fanciest well, of chairs. Actually, like, just once again, a bit of paradox flavor. This is actually the um, the notes chair. So during our weekly meetings, the person who sits in this chair has to do the notes. I would like to I would like to point out that this particular room was not originally supposed to be a meeting. This was purely supposed to be a studio. But in my kindness. I decided, you know what, we need more meeting space. Because so you this... hogged all the good chairs. Oh, yeah, clearly, mm. clearly. Because <laughs> these chairs are clearly yeah. for good You took the best wallpaper, too. I, I did, I did. It's people not wallpaper, on, it's real. People <laughs> on SomethingAlpha.com <laughs> are still deeply, deeply engaged with our wallpaper. Let's put that way. Uh, before we go, uh, Wiz, we have one question. The big blue blob, uh, nerf it or boost it? Boost it. Boost it it is. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here, uh, Wiz. It's been always a pleasure. And uh, be sure to not stab anybody in the back in CK2 anytime soon. Oh, well, actually, yeah. Too late. 
All right, so that, that will be it for this week. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. It was really fun having you here today, um, listening to us banter. I hope you got some new information out of it, at least deepening in it some, seeing some gameplay, watching Magicka, mm -hmm. uh, listening to us banter about everything. Ancient Space, which Ancient is on pre-order right now, by the way. If you go check it out, paradoxpuzzle.com. You can go and pre-order games. Currently on ten percent off, actually. On our awesome. Store, so. If you were earlier today, we're like, wow, this game. You know, it tickles all the right spots, ticks all the boxes. That does not involve being wrecked. You know, you want to go and check that out right now. It's uh, very sexy. We will be back next week, Thursday at three. Unless we say something else, expect us to be here in this very room talking to you about other things and more paradox games and just everything. Um, that you can imagine. As always, we would love to hear your feedback and thoughts about the stream. If you do have questions, you can talk to us and just post them on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want. These streams are also going to be up on the Paradox Extra channel, as far as I am aware. I will be working on that as soon as I possibly can. Yes, so you can just find it and look around and pause and, I don't know, just look at us and wander. Uh, but that will be all for now. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you next week. See Cheers. You guys later.